Good morning from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to have a go at making a sex on the beach flavoured cider. So here's my key ingredients. This is a turbo cider which means it's apple juice from concentrate rather than apples which is the key ingredient and you will note that this is apple juice from concentrate 100%. No nasty additives, so that's the key ingredient with it being a cider. I'm also going to add a little bit of yeast nutrient just to give the yeast something to feed upon. I'm going to add 250 grams of brewing sugar. I'm going to add skinny flavour drops, sex on the beach flavour. Now I've never used these before ever. These are something which is completely new territory to me. They contain sucralose, sunflower extract, citric acid, black carrot juice, concentrate and that is it. I've no idea how much to add, I'm making this up as I go along. It's completely uncharted territory to me. And my yeast of choice today is Lalvin ICV D47. In terms of fermentation vessel I'm using the humble demijohn, the warhorse. So to begin proceedings, I'm going to add one litre of apple juice into a saucepan. I don't normally do this, I normally put water in, but I'm going to try avoid using water today. That will do. There's probably that much left in there. I'm then going to add into that the brewing sugar. So the brewing sugar is dextrose monohydrate and it really does dissolve quite easily. So now I've got all that in there, I'm going to give it a little stir. Just make sure there's none stuck to the bottom. And then it's gas on and heat on. And I just want this to warm through. Now it won't need to boil by any means, it just needs to warm. And I just want to see it go clear again. Okay, so this is a turbo cider as I said, and it's as easy as pouring apple juice into the demijohn. That's why they're called turbo ciders. If you've never heard of turbo ciders before, there's a great Facebook group, Turbo Ciders for All. Go and have a look at it. Lots of interesting recipes in there and some really good people. So I'm just squeezing the apple juice out and yes, I do quite often get comments that say, why don't you stab the bottom and it'll come out quicker. I'm not in a rush. Despite the fact that it's a turbo. I like to give it a squeeze actually, there's something quite therapeutic about it. So sex on the beach flavour, a classic cocktail. Let's see if it tastes anything like the classic cocktail when it's done. I just saw the flavourings and thought, ooh, that's interesting. Anyway, have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? Moss Home and Garden. If you haven't, just go to uh, www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Once you're there, hit the red subscribe button and you'll get a notification every single week when I upload new content. I tend to upload most of my brewing films 5 o'clock UK time on a Monday. Right, I won't put any more in just for now because I want to make sure that what I've got in the pan with the brewing sugar will fit in here. Okay, I'm going to add a couple of teaspoonfuls of yeast nutrient. This will just give the yeast a little bit more of something to feed on. It won't get as stressed, it'll be nice and happy hopefully and make better flavour cider. So just going back to the saucepan, you can see it's cleared. I'm going to turn the heat completely off. It's not even close to boiling. It really does dissolve nice and easily, the uh, brewing sugar. A lot easier than conventional caster sugar. So in this goes, as neatly as possible. Always get a bit of drippage. That's all fitted in nicely. Right, it's time to get my sex on the beach flavour in now. Now the instructions say add five drops per drink, so I'm guessing that means per glass of drink. I mean, there's obviously a lot more than a glass of drink here. So I'm just gonna have to have a go with gut instinct. I think I'll probably add a quarter of the bottle. Let's see how I go. So you just squeeze the bottle and it kind of comes out. I can always back flavour when it comes to bottling this at the end. Okay, I won't put any more in for now. And that is about a quarter of the bottle that's gone in there. I'm now going to top this up with a bit more apple juice. 
and that's now up to about 4.3 litres. I won't put any more in there because if I do I think I'm going to end up losing a lot of it when it begins to ferment and forms a Krausen. If that does happen anyway I'll use a blow-off pipe. I'll just take the airlock out and put a blow-off pipe in. It's no big deal. I need to take the original gravity so I can work out the alcohol by volume at the end of the brew. So I'm just going to pour out 100 ml. That's gone into my hydrometer tube and that won't go back into the demijohn. I need to get this down to 20 degrees before I can take the original gravity. So I'm just going to pop it in the fridge for 10 minutes because it's just slightly warmer than that. So just while I'm waiting for what's in the hydrometer tube to cool down, let's get the yeast in. So I'm just going to put one and a half teaspoons of yeast in there. So there's one. And there's a half. And the yeast is floating on top. I'm just going to give it a little swish around. Okay, I'm now ready to take the original gravity for this brew. And I'm starting off on an original gravity of 1.068, 1068. Okay, I'm going to have a little nifter of this, see what it tastes like. This is obviously unfermented. That is absolutely delicious. It's so sweet. The Sex on the Beach flavour really comes through. So hopefully that will also really come through in the final cider. So I've got my demijohn labelled up and I'm now just waiting for fermentation to begin. Okay. This has been in the demijohn now for a good six hours and a small Krausen has formed. I must admit the temperature is a little bit on the cool side and I'm going to have to move this into the living room, I think. But fermentation has begun. The bubbles are going very, very slowly through the airlock, but I think as I warm this up, that will hasten. So I'm going to move this into the living room. If anything dramatic happens during the fermentation, then I'll have an update. Otherwise, the next film you see will be after fermentation when it's either clearing or hopefully straight to bottling. See you then. So this is just a two day update and I'm just showing you that nothing dramatic has happened with the Krausen or fermentation. It's still fairly slow but the Krausen is moderate. It hasn't been anything that as rapid as what I was expecting so I think this is just going to be a nice and gentle one. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's my sex on the beach cider bottling day. Yep, bottling, not clearing, because it's done that all by itself. And look at that, doesn't that look nice? So this has been in the demijohn for seven weeks and it's fermented pretty much the whole time. There are still some bubbles coming up. If you take a little close up there, you can see some bubbles, but it's reached a point now where I'm probably only getting one bubble through the airlock every minute. So I think it's slowed down enough for bottling. So I've got my bottles sanitised and in the sink. And in each of the seven 50ml bottles, I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of priming sugar. This is standard household caster sugar. And the yeast which is left in the cider will have a nibble at this sugar. It will cause a fractional tiny bit of extra fermentation that will create CO2 as a byproduct and when the CO2 builds up pressure that's what will give it a sparkle. So now it's bung out, siphoning tube in, I've got the tube held in place with this extremely handy clip, the bottom of the tube is right down into the bottom of the demijohn where a very thin layer of sediment is. The first bit might be a bit murky but the first bit that comes out is going to go into my hydrometer tube. Let's rock and roll. And there we go. So a little bit of cloudiness to begin with. And now that's cleared up nicely. It smells very fruity, fruity cider. So I've got high hopes that the sex on the beach flavouring is going to carry through with this. Let's see. If it does need to be back flavoured because it doesn't come through enough, hey presto. Looking good though, I think it's going to be a lively one.
And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that this is over. I've almost filled the six bottle up, so what I want to do is take the gravity so I can work out the final alcohol by volume, and then I'm just going to have a tiny sample of this and then pour the rest of it in that bottle to fill it up. So here goes. And that has sank rather nicely. And that has finished on a final gravity of 1.002. So I'm going to work out the final alcohol by volume. So I take the original gravity, which is 1.068. I deduct from that the final gravity, which is 1.002. That equals 0 0.066. I multiply this figure by 131.25. And that gives me a final alcohol by volume of... 8.66%. I'm happy with that. Let's just say 8.7% because after the tiny bit of fermentation that will take place in the bottle, that will just go up a fraction. 8.7% it is. So I'm just topping this bottle up now with what's left in the hydrometer tube. So I've got a little bit out of the hydrometer tube, just have a sample to decide whether or not I need to back sweeten it or back flavour it, I should say. I absolutely do not. That's actually very nice and it's quite sweet already. Mmm, good. I'm looking forward to this after conditioning. As always. So it's time to add my bungs to my bottles. I've had them softening in very hot water. It just makes them more malleable and easier to push in. Just pour those out onto the drainer. Okay, so shake off the excess water in the bottle. Push it in. Ugh. One, two, three, four. I can already tell the bungs are cooling down because they're getting harder to push in. Five, and last but not least. Six. Right, the bungs are in place, but they won't stay in place unless I add cages. When the CO2 gets created in here and the pressure builds up from eating the priming sugar, then poof, missile. So I need to add cages. So it's just simply a case of putting the cage on and twisting it until it's tight and secure. Like so, you can see that one. You don't need to see me do the rest, it's not that exciting. I'll be back to you in a minute. So that's all my cages on. I now need to just rinse my bottles. I don't want any sticky residue on the outside of them. So I've got to label them next. I've made some labels up using a simple Microsoft Word template. I'm just gonna print these out. Okay, I'm just going to get my labels and my bottles. It's nice for them to look nice, isn't it? I know they're not the most exciting of labels, but they'll do. If anybody would like to suggest in the comments a nice label template maker, I'm more than willing to investigate them. Although I have bought loads of these labels, so if they could fit on something like this, it would be very helpful for me. Right, I'm going to finish these off and then I'll get back to you. And there they are. Welcome to my conditioning room, folks. This is where my ciders will hopefully develop a sparkle. So I'm going to pop the ciders on the shelf just here. So these shelves are kept at a fairly warm temperature thanks to this very handy little thermometer down here. That thermometer is connected to a thermostat plug. When the temperature drops below 19.5 it activates the heater behind the shelves and when it gets to 20.5 it turns it off again. I have to rotate these around a little bit but basically this is great for conditioning them and I've always had a sparkle since I've been using these shelves, so that's been a good thing. So basically that's it for now. 
I'll catch up with you in a month's time when it will come to opening and tasting. So I'll see you then. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's my sex on the beach cider grand opening night. It's been conditioning for five weeks and as ever I'm very excited about this one. Now I know for a fact that this is conditioned. Look how much that bung has raised. Scary. This is either going to be a bottle rocket or it's just going to be a damn good pop, hopefully. Right, let's hope it just doesn't go everywhere. So what I'd like is something that looks good, pours nicely, but above all, tastes good. I know it's carbed. Maybe not too carbed. I'm having a slight cage issue, so a top tip. If you ever have a cage issue, get a little fork and just turn it with the fork and that will open the cage up. This cage is definitely on its last legs. It's gone all sharp like they do. Ow, yeah. Right, am I going to be able to get the cage off without the bung flying out? Scary stuff. I feel like I'm diffusing a bomb. Gosh. Right, sex on the beach. Let's see what it's like. Oh, popper dopper. Look at that. Vapor and... Oh my God, it smells gorgeous. Sex on the Beach, 1997 classic by Teaspoon. We're gonna have sex on the beach. Na 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 na. I don't know the words. And I had to Google the fact that it was by Teaspoon. Honestly, I thought it was by Venga Boys. Anyway, 1997. Look at that clarity. That is absolutely beautiful. I mean, literally, I'll have a baby sham. That is stunning. That's one of the most attractive looking ciders I've ever made, actually. I fancy you. Yeah, nice. Smells gorgeous, really sweet. That is absolutely fantastic. It's a sweet cider. Honestly, that is absolutely gorgeous. Teaspoon, 1997, Sex on the Beach, Memories of Japanese Whispers in Barnsley. Oh my God. Maybe things to forget. Anyway, that is lovely. It's a sweet, full-bodied cider. It's plenty carbed, not too carbed, really good flavour. It will make a lovely spring and summer drink. I'm very happy with this one and I will definitely make it again. Get yourself them flavourings, folks. This is a good one. Cheers and I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.